This tutorial is brought to you by one of the authors of Revising Professional Writing, now in its third edition. My students call me Dr. Kim. The publishers made this video available under a Creative Commons license. For more information, contact parlaypress.com. Remember, you can use the pause button at any time, and if you see shadows or something weird on the screen, try changing your playback quality settings. Well, the view you see here includes everything you might learn about professional writing in my tutorials. There are others that help you understand content development, organization, style, and mechanics, as well as the rhetorical context that determines which content organization or style is going to be effective in a specific situation. Although your primary interest in this tutorial is the message itself, effective content development can only be judged by taking into account the writer's purpose and audience. I should remind you I'm going to focus on addressing an audience from Western cultures. They place a high value on efficiency. If you haven't listened to the tutorials on rhetorical context yet, especially the one on audience, you should. Alright, here we go. This tutorial focuses on one area of content development, specifically informative prose. I'm pretty sure you have heard about the techniques I'm going to explain. I will help you understand, however, how important they are for professional writers by discussing examples from the workplace. We'll be considering the content of a business plan written by a manufacturing company called Fabrica. I've revised the original somewhat to make it more useful for our purposes. Remember the quality in the video makes it nearly impossible for you to read the excerpt from the business plan. If you're a student using our book, your instructor can get you a copy, or you can always download one at prosewrite.com. The audience of potential investors or venture capitalists that the writer wants to reach is made up of non-experts. You may think of such an audience as experts, but while they may be experts on financial content within the proposal, they're not likely to be experts about this specific company or textile engineering. That means the writer has to overcome their inability to accept the document's message by providing information. The audience is also going to be skeptical or sensitive to that message, but I'm going to discuss that in a separate tutorial on persuasive prose. So in this tutorial, I'll explain six techniques for developing informative content. Hopefully, I'll also convince you that content development is critical to the success of this business plan. I'll begin with defining as the first of the six techniques for developing informative content. Pause the recording, take a second to read this passage which appears within Fabrica's business plan. I want you to identify terms that might be unfamiliar to the audience. Well, I think the obvious candidate is Dobby Loom. This is a technical term that an audience of investors is not likely to understand without a definition. There are three types of definitions to choose from. Let's consider an example of a formal definition first. Now, you might be thinking this definition doesn't seem all that helpful, and I think you're right. It uses even more technical terminology. Let's consider a different kind of definition, an operational one. Now, this definition seems more useful with the business plan's audience because it's less technical and instead it focuses on the function of a Dobby loom. There's one more type of definition called extended. The example you see here shows only part of an extended definition for Dobby Loom. It might include both a formal definition, an operational definition, and lots of other stuff. Unlike a formal definition, which resembles a dictionary entry, the extended definition resembles an encyclopedia entry. The writer of this business plan could increase the readiness of the audience by providing an operational definition in the executive summary portion of the document, 
and then an extended definition elsewhere in the document that would describe in greater detail the business's product. Describing is the second technique for developing informative content. What might benefit from a description in the passage that we considered on the previous slide? Dobby Loom is a contender again. There are two types of description, physical and abstract. Providing physical details is one way to provide more information about the product. But note that this type of description is highly technical. So what about describing the inventor and R&D director? That would increase the audience's expertise on Fabrica. The potential investors are certainly not an expert on this individual, although he's critical to Fabrica's business success. Providing abstract details about Dr. Saffet helps the readers overcome their lack of knowledge about the R&D director. Description leads to precision. The writer of this business plan could be more precise and increase the readiness of the investors by providing a physical description of the loom, perhaps in an appendix, so that investors could choose whether or not to read it, and an abstract description of the R&D director within the document itself. Now, using examples is the third technique for developing informative content. What might be better understood with an example in the same passage we've been considering? How well do you think the audience understands unique constellation of features? I'd say to increase the audience's expertise, the revised version here does a much better job because it lists four specific features that make Fabrica's loom unique. Examples are critical for non-experts because they make what is abstract more concrete. Comparing and contrasting is the fourth of the six techniques for developing informative content. Take a second to look at a different passage from Fabrica's business plan. What general information would be more understandable with comparison and contrast as supporting detail? I think if you look at the revision, a modern loom is better understood by contrasting it with Fabrica's Dobby loom, which is faster and cheaper than a modern loom. The revision continues by using a comparison to show that Fabrica's loom produces something similar to a modern loom. So the comparison and contrast helps the audience better understand the writer's product. Comparisons, contrasts, and analogies make the unfamiliar more understandable by connecting it to the familiar. Obviously, you need to know enough about your readers to predict what is and is not familiar to them. All right, classifying is the fifth technique for developing informative content. Read this passage from Fabrica's business plan and think about what generalization would be more understandable with some supporting detail. How about the market? In the revision, the market for Fabrica's product is classified into four types. Weaving mills, fabric traders, designers, and garment manufacturers. A group of potential investors is now more likely to have the knowledge needed to overcome their lack of expertise about the market for Fabrica's product. Providing outside sources is the last of the six techniques for developing informative content. The passage we considered on the previous slide would benefit from citing some outside source as the origin of the information that's provided. This type of detail is most relevant for overcoming audience unwillingness rather than inability. So I'll discuss the use of sources more thoroughly in the tutorial on developing persuasive content. Time to check your understanding of developing information by revising a passage you haven't seen before. The question asks that you identify unsupported generalizations and describe at least two techniques you could use to further develop informative details. You're also asked to implement those techniques by actually revising. 
pause the recording and take a look at this passage from a consultant's report to a retail client. I'll point out three generalizations that would benefit from further development. That's if the consultant wants to make the readers able to accept the ideas in this passage. First, poor customer service might be developed further by describing or giving examples of what the writer means. The revision you see here focuses on describing. More than 30% of complaints are about employees rather than products. This descriptive information will help the reader interpret poor service in the way the writer intends. Second, the writer might define pay schedule in order to make sure the reader understands what the consultant means when using the term. But when you think about the context of this report, the audience is probably already able to understand what the consultant means by pay schedule, so this technique is not likely to add valuable information. I want to point out that as a student who's accustomed to writing for teachers, you often got good marks for including definitions of terms your teacher already knew. That's because he or she wanted to check your understanding. Once again, however, workplace readers are not ordinarily interested in checking on your understanding. They assume you understand. Third, instead of defining pay schedule, the writer might describe current structure of its pay schedule and new and more effective pay schedules. The suggested revision shown here uses the technique of describing to make the readers able to accept the idea of a new pay schedule. I've explained six techniques for developing informative prose by referring to a business plan written for potential investors who are non-experts on the content of the document. Revisions based on these techniques allow the writer to provide the content needed to make the audience ready to accept their message. Note that an understanding of the rhetorical context is essential to effectively achieve the writer's purpose. The informative content required to communicate a message for a non-expert audience is quite different than for an expert audience. So the more you know about your audience's expertise, the better prepared you'll be to provide the information they need. Although my tutorials are designed to guide you after a draft has been written, this tutorial on informative prose could be used while you're planning what to write. You might use the list of six techniques as a heuristic for thinking about what you should define, describe, provide examples for, etc. The same is true of the other development tutorials. In my experience, workplace writers struggle far less than student writers in developing enough content for a draft. That's no doubt a consequence of the fact that no one writes in the workplace without some need to communicate a message. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for students who are often forced to write when they have no such need.